All right. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the site advisory committee for um, the roundabout at Durant Little Andover Road. I am Amanda Grant. I'll be the facilitator of this meeting. Um, we, I think I have the same group I had yesterday. So we already went over the, the role of the site advisory committee. Does anybody need me to go over that one more time today? Okay, then we will jump. Um, we'll jump to the introductions. Again, I'm Amanda Grant. I'm with Architecture Services. Good morning, everybody. Or good afternoon. This is Tommy Rawls. I'm the project manager for the Dover and Durant intersection. Hi everyone, I'm Noelle Mason. Um, I am representative from the sculpture department at the University of South Florida. Hi, this is Megan Nixon with Commissioner Stacey White's office. Ethel Hill with Architecture Services. All right, with that out of the way, we'll jump into the um, we'll jump to the um, call for artists. So in that call, we basically uh, invited interested artists to provide responses to the request for qualifications for exterior sculpture uh, at the proposed roundabout at the intersection of Durant Road, Little, and Dover Road, located in Val Rico. Um, the desired theme for the artwork is the Roman goddess Ceres with citrus. The piece should be comprised of a natural material, monolithic in form, and require very low maintenance. The selected artist will be responsible for the design, fabrication, and installation of the artwork to include the foundation and all related permitting. Um, a marker will be placed at each pedestrian crossing with information on the history of the citrus industry in Valrico, information on how many of the subdivision names in the area were derived from the citrus industry, and a description of the statue. Um, that's a little background information. I believe I sent everybody a copy of the call for artists, so you guys can um, review that at your leisure. Uh, it, there's a little bit more detail um, that goes into the design criteria, about 21 items or so uh, that the artist, the shortlisted artists will um, use to prepare their site-specific proposals. That out of the way, we'll jump into reviewing the submissions. I believe we had nine submissions. Um, the first one is Daniel Borup. And he is from Shelley, Idaho. Um, has his BS from um, Brigham Young University. Um, he's a representational sculpt sculptorist. Um, specializing in figure sculpture with over 25 commissioned works of public art and numerous, numerous awards. Um, got over 11 years of experience. And he has included some renderings for his proposal. Next, we have Donald Ianella um, from St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, he's got over 15 years experience. He has a BFA from Cooper Union, Montclair University. Um, 
he's provided many references. And his proposal says that his interpretation of the theme is a contemporary interpretation of classic theme. She is approximately seven feet tall, seven foot tall sculpture made of Corten steel, atop a seven foot tall cast stone plinth depicting the goddess Ceres in a classical pose with oranges. Her right hand holds the orange uh, aloft in, and in her other hand, the orange tree branch. She is built up carefully um, from shape courts and pieces welded together in assemblage style. The result being a work of modern art interpreting uh, an ancient theme. The oranges are brightly colored with industrial applied powder coat in contrast with oxidized patent patina of the court and steel surface. It would be prominently located in the center of the roundabout. The sculpture will make an impressive statement while appealing to the hearts and minds of residents of the dri and drivers. The sculpture is a homage to the agricultural heritage of Valrico a heartfelt memorial and compelling work of art that the community can take pride in. The sculpture would be fabricated of the highest standards and will be constructed entirely from quartz and steel, um, the ideal material for permanent outdoor public art because of its permanence and corrosion resistance. Quartz and steel is, forms a rich, dark, protective, weathered barrier which presents further oxidation to the material. It will be incredibly durable and weatherproof, impervious to winds, moisture, and heat. Uh, and that is his proposal. Next, we have Gareth Curtis from Fort Tyne, Montana. And um, He's a figurative sculptor, uh, got over 34 years of experience, provided a long list of references. He proposes to create for us a life-size or slightly larger statue of Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture. She would be standing in a forward moving and, and posture as if she was descending down to the viewer. Her clothing would seem as if it was wind blown to give the work even more life and energy. She would have a small crown to sort of sorts as shown in many of the classical uh, sculptures from antiquity. In her right hand would be an orange cradled in her left arm, a basket of oranges. The work would be designed to have interesting composition from every single angle. She would be on a high plinth as directed in your prospectus. She would also have the text engraved on either on either the face of the stone base or on the bronze medallion that would be set into the plinth. And that's his um, and that's a clay model. The statue itself would be approximately six feet tall mounted to the stone plinth. The overall height so the overall work would be approximately 12 feet. The work would be cast in either bronze or aluminum. You could have either option. Both work very well for outdoor sculpture and for surf or far surface other mediums for longevity and easy maintenance. He has a great deal of experience in both materials. Next, Humanity for Memorial, Inc. Um, not sure where they're located. I believe it's somewhere up north in the D.C. area. Um, but they are a team of sculptors and have an associate foundry. Um, They have extensive experience in design, fabrication, and installation of public art.
they went a different route for this and chose to, to propose um, the Great Blue Heron, as they titled it, um, representing the vibrant spirit of the community and the beauty of the nature of the, at the intersection of Durant Little and Dover Road, located in Valrico. Um, the Great Blue Heron creates a sense of place and evokes community pride, reflecting in the beautiful spirit of the community. Um, they 100% guarantee museum quality bronze, uh, safe installation, and indestructible structure. Super strong, permanently attached structure found to withstand wind loads of 150 miles per hour. The landmark would be 16 feet. Um, total height to include a two foot base uh, to meet the demands of the sea salt air. Um, yeah, that's their proposal. Next is Jim Gallucci of Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, he's got an MFA from Syracuse University with an emphasis in sculpture. He's also got a BFA, same thing. Um, public artist, he's been, got over 40 years experience. Um, he titles his proposal, Cirrus Offering. Um, he describes it as an abstract depiction of the Roman goddess Cirrus uh, offering golden fruits of citrus. The materials he proposes would be stainless steel with text cutouts and light from behind. Oh, that happened. Um, and he proposes that the dimensions of the sculpture would be eight feet tall with a base and seven feet tall without um, and five feet in diameter. Did not send a concept drawing, just that description. Next is Joshua Weiner of Boulder, Colorado. He's a certified structural welder, has completed artwork for about six different roundabouts. He's got about 16 years of experience. We've got Linda Ciro. She's from Walnut, California. Um, she went to Fullerton College um, of Sculpture Foundry uh, and got her BA at UCLA. She's a sculpture artist, also a licensed building contractor and landscape contractor and works for the Planning Commission of the City of Walnut. She's been doing art for over 25 years. And here is her, a sketch of her proposal. Next is Michael McLaughlin from Torrington, Connecticut. He went to Lyme Academy um, School of Fine Arts. Got 20 years experience. And he provided the following. Um, he would like to, he's interested in proposing original works of art cast in bronze and submit to you his credentials along with what he thought and sentiment to he strives to bring to his sculptures. It is 
the many faces of nature that provides a sense of certitude in his life and work. Nature is diverse, is the diverse lesson. Um, nature is diverse in lessons that it offers. Sometimes these assertions are self-contained while many others are open-ended. His belief is that public art must be perpetuate, must perpetuate a generosity of the spirit with the community. Viewers should discover the unexpected finding content that applies to another part of their lives. Thus, the art becomes a co-creation. That is his statement of intent. He provided an old Asian proverb that says, if you wish to hear the temple bells, listen to the sound of the seas. If you wish to see God, look attentively at creation. And he thanks you for your consideration. Next is Milligan Studios. They are of St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, Dr. Nicole Milligan is an artist and a historian and a native of, of Tampa, whose father was a member of the Seminole Nation. Um, they provided lots of references. And their proposal suggests that Cirrus would be a uniquely Florida sculpture um, as the six-foot goddess rises out of a three-foot wave of a gulf of water with a gown made of waves. She would be holding the, a golden orange as an offering. The use of the blue kiln-formed architectural glass, um, a proven material in public art in a public art setting would give Cirrus a sense of illumination without exterior lighting sources. Um, they envision the sculpture to be sited on a six foot plinth that is concrete clad in Italian marble, which is a technique that they've used before with balance, a bronze sculptor um, for the Dakota County Courthouse. The words which are to be engraved in each face can either be on bronze plaques or engraved directly onto the stone. They are interested in making beautiful objects that evoke a sense of belonging. And that is it. I will run through those one more time. Amanda, with this artist, Donald, mm -hmm. um, when you're reading the summary of his proposal for the statue earlier, were you saying that he was going to do it in a similar style um, as to ones that are being displayed now, like multiple different kinds of objects like, build it together? Yes, an assemblage. Ah. That's, he described it. He described it as an assemblage, but this um, on the screen now is his the image he sent as his proposal, which doesn't look like his other assemblage work. Yeah, so. I was I was a little confused seeing that, but I'm I'm wondering if it you know the digital program digital rendering just doesn't um, capture the assemblage effect that he goes for. Yeah. 
Thank you. He did describe it that way in his, in his statement, um, mm -hmm. but the image mm -hmm. definitely doesn't match that. So. <laughs> no. Was Donald uh, Gianella, Gianella, um was that the core 10 one? Yes. Okay. That makes me wonder if okay. he's gonna do it in an assemblage style because all of those assemblage pieces are not out of core 10. Like this later stuff, the stuff that's like um, the made out of obvious like cutouts of sheets right the the mm -hmm. image that you're on right now like that's all core 10 all of the stuff that he had earlier with uh assemblage is not none of that is core 10 because it's really hard to get core 10 that's already been produced into something like like that's not core 10 steel there mm -hmm. like it really only i mean it comes in sheets and tubes <laughs> Essentially, um, I don't. I don't know if that. It just makes it confuses me a little bit. I guess because all of this right. is stainless that he's showing here, right? Or some kind of or ferrous, but like you know, covered in some kind of yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Uh, it, that makes me wonder. Yeah, to imagine this out of Corton Steel is um, yep, good point.
All right. Any other further discussion before we um, begin to rank? Amanda, this is Tommy. Could you read the that last one again? You read something for the Milligan one. I'm just confused on like the size. <laughs> I just mentioned a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Sirius will be a unique, a uniquely Florida sculpture as the six foot goddess rises out of a three foot wave of Gulf waters with a gown made of waves. She is holding a golden orange as an offering. The use of the blue kiln-formed architectural glass, a proven material in public art setting, will give Sirius a sense of illumination without exterior lighting source. We envision the sculpture to be sited on a six-foot plinth that is concrete clad in Italian marble, which is a technique that they have used before with balance a bronze sculptor for the Dakota County Courthouse. Um, the words, which are to be engraved on each face as a, um, on each face can either be a bronze plaque or engraved directly onto the stone. The Milligan Studio is interested in making beautiful objects that evoke a sense of belonging. It was just interesting, I, I, you know, the, the project has an allowance in it for landscaping and lighting, and you know, it's interesting if you got, if this is kind of some kind of glass structure or reflective structure, you, your lighting could really be interesting at night, you know, so with all of them though, you know, but, and again, it's a neighborhood, you don't want something sticking out too crazy probably, but I don't know, it's just an interesting thought. Yeah, uh, how do you feel about the lighting, like the reflection of the glass at a traffic circle? Is that a concern, a safety concern? If you do it properly, probably not. I think I think it, it looks really pretty if it's like you know, everybody would be staring at it, just like the other statues, I guess. But um, that's probably the biggest concern. But I don't, I don't think so. I don't I, as long as it's not reflective, you know, like super shiny, you know. A, sh a shiny piece of metal might catch my eye and, and hit them pretty good coming in there. But this this will draw the light, I think, and just reflect through it. I don't think it'll. I mean, I'll, I'll, it'll go through it. It won't reflect at a driver. You know, the sun's hitting it a certain way. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's something to consider on both. You know, as we go forward. I would agree with that. Knowing that material, it tends to work more like a more like a diffusion of light right uh it actually like kind of diffuses the light versus having something that would be somehow kind of like work as a lens and reflect uh aggressively um i i do appreciate that this this uh particular um application because of the idea that it's a little bit more adventurous in terms of materials than a lot of the other ones um is that statue is that is that like kind of a clear glass is that what i'm looking at or is it a like the, the body of the the, the goddess mm -hmm. um they don't say the, what wave, made uh, the wave looks that way it said something else, right being made out of glass as well or just i thought um gown of waves like the gown would come up out of the waves and a golden sure. yeah so let me read it one more time Sirius will be uniquely a uniquely florida sculpture as the six foot goddess rises out of a three foot wave of gulf waters with a gown made of waves she is holding a golden orange as an offering the use of the blue kiln formed architectural glass a proven material in public art settings will give Sirius a sense of illumination without an exterior lighting source. We envision the sculpture to be sited on a six foot plinth that is concrete clad in Italian marble, um, which is a technique we have used before with balance a bronze sculpture for the Dakota County Courthouse. The words would be engraved on the face, can either be in 
bronze plaques are engraved directly uh, onto the stone. So sounds like her dress is formed out of the waves. Yeah, it's a glass. It sounds like it's glass. It's all glass. That's impressive. I mean, like in terms of, I mean, like at night, you could put a soft light on it and it would probably really glow nicely without being over shiny bright, you know. Do if it's supposed to be glass, Tommy, would that be a problem with since this is like at an east west intersection with the sun? Uh, I think if it's done right, it'll make it better. You could use that, they would use that light, I'm sure, to. That, that sun, and you know, the other thing I like about this in a way, I mean, just the, she's twisting and you can, you know, if you're coming from all different directions, you would see different pieces of it, you know. I was just thinking that if you're approaching it, it would be, you know, if you come at it at the right angle and the sun's at the right angle, wouldn't it be blinding? I don't think so. Glass isn't really reflective. I mean, it's, you know, or or you make sure that they, they do something to the glass to make sure, glass, as long as it doesn't have like a sharp edge to it, you know, a sharp mm -hmm. edge can sometimes reflect. But if it, this looks like, these look like edges that are not sharp, you know, other than the wave, but I don't know if the wave's gonna be, like, you know, we just gotta be cautious of that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, it's a good right. point. I mean, I think, there are, I think this one just edges. is different. Yeah. Um, in terms of the way that they're, they're suggesting that they're building this kiln-fused glass is super um, molten looking, right? It's got a very kind of like, there's no sharp edges. It's like much more, like every corner has been softened by heat, essentially. Yeah, it's not like crystal or something. You know, crystal yeah. texture, you're right, it'll pop it, yeah, I guess. Okay, that makes more sense. The, and then I just wanted to point out that these are concept sketches. So if you see something and you think it has potential, the next round is where they would kind of modify and refine these ideas, um, you know, to meet the requirements of of the county. So if you if you hear now, if you see it as having potential, and you're like, hey, um, you want to provide a little bit more guidance as they develop these concepts that keep that this is the one that's also, in mind. also from florida or she's from tampa yeah she said she's a native but currently living in st paul minnesota yeah, yeah. um a member of the seminole uh nation this group is also applied to another um public art project we have uh, regarding a Native American sculpture. So I think that's why they included that here. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I, I personally, I live out this way. I like the use of the glass with the natural light as opposed to um, just the use of lights to illuminate the sculpture. Oh yeah, when I was talking about lighting, I'm talking about at night. You know, of course, the day it would be, it would be so. I'm just thinking at night you can put a soft light on it to light it up. Really interesting. Good job, Amanda. Get us all thinking. <laughs> all right. Were there any others? <laughs> Now, Amanda, the next round is there's how many you get top three? Is that what it is? Yeah, we're going to pick our, we're going to select three artists um, and then I'll take those rankings to the public art committee uh, next week and they'll see the same proposals you saw and they will take your rankings into um, great consideration and um, they'll direct me to move forward with requesting site specific proposals. Generally, what happens is they will confirm your your rankings, and that'll be the pick. Um, there are other times when they may see somebody else in there and say, we want to add a fourth or a fifth, um, something like that. Typically, they never 
disregard anybody that you've selected, but um, they do have that kind of authority. So that's what happens. That's the next phase. This is difficult because I certainly have more than three. Yeah, this was a little tougher than, than yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would agree, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll find more places to put statues. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going now. Uh, well, I mean, if you guys, if you guys want, do you want to rank four or five? I think three will do it because there's some, obviously there's, there you'll see, I think the numbers you'll, you'll, you know, people will rank them. You'll get four, you'll get three or four. You'll see the spread, Amanda. And if some of them are close, you know, I know when we do certain proposals and stuff, we just, if they're close enough, you just include them in and you recommend to include them in. Correct. That is how you're gonna get a to, Yeah. You're going to get a total number. And you know, if there's like one at 22 and one at 19 and, Three to eighteen. You might want to do all five of them. You know. All right. Do you guys want me to run through the slideshow one more time and then have James put up the ranking form? Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, I just had a general question. Are these both going to go up at about the same time? Um. um yeah. They'll they'll be relatively close. I would say. Uh, I mean, just in terms of the construction of the roundabouts. Uh, the Dover Durant. Well, we don't know. There's probably going to be a couple of years, but they'll be near near each other. Yeah. So if just by chance the same artist gets the both commissions, is that going to be a problem, an issue for timing? I am not an artist. No, no. I, I think the biggest issue is you know, and maybe Megan can chime in on this. I would think the issue is it's okay to have different looks at the different intersections. Correct. I mean, I would think. Um, you know, if the same artist gets it, we did that with um, our last round, didn't we? Where um, yeah. Giza Gaspar got both um, both contracts, and he seemed to indicate that there would be no issue. Great. Um, typically, oh. most of the artists um, oh. will, if they applied for both. They kind of, um, especially they prefer them to have the same schedule so that they can work on them at the same time. Um, and I believe it was actually Curtis Gareth. I didn't. Um, I'd have to get out of this. I believe in his last submission, he actually referenced. Um, let me check really quick. He even said that if he were to get both commissions, he would come down here, rent a studio, really learn the lay of the land and do his work down here. So some of them um, are thriving on getting, would love to have both. Yeah, I think, um Usually tends to work out if they get both at the same time. It doesn't delay as far as I can tell. Of course, haven't um, followed a project from the very beginning of the installation yet, but uh, that's, it seems like it does. It works out fine. And Noel, I I take it you were the local artist. So do you? Do yes. You that's correct. Yeah, do you still hold true over Linda's um, sculpture and the posing and maybe, I don't know, I'm kind of concerned about the, the flowing gown over Daniel? Uh, no. Um, in, I, I honestly, I think Daniel's, that's Daniel's there that you have up. Uh-huh. Um, I prefer this over Linda's application. I mean, uh, before I was like, he, it's pretty impressive that you already have some sort of rendering that you're, you know, that you're sending us. 
Yeah, it, I think a lot of that, though, has to do with people's comfortability with digital modeling, you know, mm-hmm. like um, in the case of uh, Gareth's application, right? Um, the clay mock-up is a, obviously an, an old school way of <laughs> mocking up a sculpture um, right. versus the digital modeling, which can, um, yeah, I mean, I just think that like certain people have have digital skills that other people don't. I think it's hard to kind of compare those things to to like claim that one's going to be better than the other in, in its actual form. Um, yeah, I have a, I don't know. I'm, I, this, Linda's, Linda's proposal to me seems pretty static. Mm-hmm. The image does anyway. Um, just, well, because just how her her gown is just it's just draped. It's not flowing. It's just yeah, like, yeah. It's also like you know she's in this kind of camp, contrapose position. Um, whereas, where's the? Can you get, go back up to Daniel's image? Um, you know, there's a sort of like in this position, she seems like she's going somewhere, right? Like her. Uh, the weight is on her front foot um, and her back foot is there as like a stabilizer. So it looks like she's like moving into space in some respects where, um, which I think is more interesting visually than the proposal given by Linda. Yeah, which was the opposite yesterday. Yeah. She just I, seems like she's sort of s- sitting there like un, <laughs> you know, I, inactive. <laughs> I like them holding the the one orange. It either represents, you know, um, they just took it off the tree or something. But this with the three off of a branch that Linda did, just it's just like, are you holding the branch up? Or yeah, that just mm-mm. yeah. I'm confused by that drawing, but um, in like terms of see- how it would actually materialize in a sculpture. Well, thank you for your your guidance. Hey, uh, Amanda, could you go um, to the Gareth uh, proposal? And I, I want to hear Lisa and Noel talk about those. <laughs> oh, God. <'Cause> I, <laughs> I mean, it's just good to see, because to me, this one was moving, too, that gown, you know? Yeah, I love I mean, the gown. Gareth Curtis is um, both yesterday and today. You know, he's probably the best like representational sculpture sculptor in terms of um, his ability uh, and his like his his like relationship to the material seems very very kind of like um, he really has kind of like a, a mastery like over that in in a way that makes it feel um very like what's the word i'm looking for um like like fluid and and confident versus um to contrast it with like linda's drawing stiff and kind of clumsy does that make sense yeah, I mean, Gareth, yeah. to me, like, is very confident. I think that's a great word. Like, it's very, her head tilt and everything, it's like, whoop, you know? Yeah. You're and you can oranges. imagine this you're, in... You're getting oranges in, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you can imagine this sculpture, right? There's a lot of, like, interesting parts to the backside of this sculpture, right? Even I though it's, like, uh, it, it looks, it looks, um, from every angle, it has an interesting shape. Does that make sense? Yes, because like, yeah. the way... Yeah, back side flowing has the tension that the front side also has, right? So you get this kind of like um, the dip of her lower back and the kind of muscular structure of her upper back holding that object. And there's this sort of, um, you know, tension between like the outstretched arms, right? And um, so I, I do think like this is in terms of just skill, probably the most skillful rendering of this. Well, the whole the whole drape of the gown is all proportional. Like Daniel's, they have this one piece that just kind of like stopped midair. And I'm like, mm. I love this one. I loved his work. He was very detailed, what he can do with 
you know, garments is fantabulous. I love this one. Yeah, and just to add to that, it was in his proposal for uh, Professor Tuzi. He says, in addition to this project, I have also applied for the creation of the, st of the Statue of Sirius elsewhere in your community. In light of that, I would like to make this offer to you. If you will allow me to create both of these works, I would agree to come and create these actual full-size sculptures and clays there in your community. This would entail about two months of work. I would rent a studio space of some kind for that period, or perhaps um, there might be a local museum, school, or other facility that would like to have me working there. I've done this a number of times in the past, always with great success. Local people have loved it and have helped in enfranchise, um, and it has helped enfranchise many people with feeling a part of the work that will be done in their community for generations to come. It has been a particular interest to schools, and I have often had regular visits by whole classes of students in different grade levels. I hope you find this of interest. For me, it connects me to the project in a very special way. Yes. As a finalist, I would create a detailed clay maquette of a suitable size for you to fully grasp my intent for the project. I hope that you like my past work. Thank you for your consideration. Can you imagine those students from Blake if they could get into his studio? He ends up getting both of them. That would probably be a great program for all those kids. We'll have like a day in the he, studio. He might break the all time school field trip record. That's true. <laughs> he's, got, he's been like the obviously the runaway success. I think it was like two projects. If you haven't already figured it out, I'm going to give this guy a three. I love the whole thing. It's just <laughs> the hair is classic. She's got that little crown. It's just it's just beautiful. And it's clay. The one thing that I think about this piece, um, I, I, I hope that uh, we could communicate to him to maintain the kind of, I don't know, handwork in it. Like there's like in some of the the um, his his images of his like finished pieces, I feel like they almost get overworked or something. Like there's something about this the the maquette where it has this sort of like very Rodin esque hand seen his like hand in it, and I think that that gives it this really great um, fluidity and. Does that make sense to people? I don't know. I agree. I do. Uh, I appreciate Bo. You know, his other works were, you yeah. know, out of bronze. It's beautiful, but I understand what you're saying. You can just see where he's just like touched and molded and sculpted. Yeah. Well, it will be out of bronze, right? I mean, this yeah. is all, uh, the bronzes are all made out of clay first. Oh, could I just have this and one? Cast in bronze. Since I'm on I'm sorry, I'm taking notes. Noel, can you repeat that? Like, wh what is it that you would like to be maintained in this? Oh, so th the maquette has this really wonderful, like, um, you can see his is mark making in it, right? Like the 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 hand qual, like the his hand is very very present in the maquette, and I feel like some of the works that he's done when they get refined maybe get over refined okay. does that make sense like his hand really gives it this kind of emotional sort of ethereal uh kind of otherworldly quality right that um mm -hmm. become more than just like a statue of a person does that make sense like yeah um it's kind of like edging towards you know the the sort of road like Rodin esque style of modern sculpture that was, you know, Rodin kind of invented in the late 1800s. Um, but um, I think has a, you know, wonderful kind of like emotional quality that some of the other more kind of um, worked, I guess I would say, pieces 
They're just so, finished and polished is what it is. Yeah. And I think they kind of like become a little deadened or something. They become like an illustration of a thing versus mm -hmm. like really seeing the artists like work in it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Although he does capture some I'm great notes. expressions and emotions <laughs> in his other sculptures. But they, he does. I didn't have even the, notice the medallion. He has a medallion at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty nice touch. I was also wondering if commute, like, you could communicate, maybe not to to him, but to some of the other proposals that, especially if they're making work that doesn't really. It's not easy to see how their particular style would translate that an illustration would really help. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's some, some of the problem with some of the other proposals. It's like, I, I can't quite understand what they would be, how they would interpret. I kind of right. equated that to, to risk. Like, it's like a risk, you know, you might pick mm -hmm. somebody and go, whoa, whoa, you know, that's totally different than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the Humanity Memorial one um, in terms of answering a call for a series. <laughs> I mean, I understand the link to the community. It is a beautiful bird, but if you're asking for one thing and you throw out something else, right? You're asking for something that like celebrates like agricultural production, and you, <laughs> like, what does the heron have to do with that? <laughs> heron. Yeah. All right, guys. I just got a five minute warning. Um, okay. Our meeting is coming to an end, so okay. let's. Uh, I'm going to stop screen sharing and let's go ahead and rank. Is there? We okay with that? Yes. Yep. And we're doing three are the best and one is the third one. Three is the best. Okay. So you get three points to your favorite, two points to your second favorite, and one point to your third rank. Okay. Amanda, this is Tommy. I went old school again and sent you a PDF. Sounds good. I will check the P. I will check my emails in one second. All right. Um, no problem. Lisa. All right, I got the email.
All right. <clears throat> I think I've got everybody. Um, the rankings are as follows. Um, first rank is Gareth Curtis with 16, followed by Milligan Studio with 11, followed by Daniel Borup with 9. Wonderful. And believe it or not, yeah, that's where we're at. So we are done. Thank you, guys. Thank you so very much. Very much. Thank you. Good Thank talking you. to you. Have a good one. All right. We'll, we'll meet again uh, in about two months. <laughs> All right. Awesome.